This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance, Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative, Pods, moving and storage, solved. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, and by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome to this week's edition of Paradise, Louisiana. And Don, we just full of hunting, man. The deer in a rut. That cold weather runs some ducks in and some ducks off. But what it did run, it run a lot of water out of the marsh. Yeah, and some people couldn't even get to their blinds. So. Right. Which the jury's still out of whether we're going to experience any fish kills. Those usually don't turn up until a few days or maybe even a week after the deep freeze. But for now, that's over with. We got some heavy rain in, but that's starting to clear out. We're going to be looking forward to some more cold temperatures. But you're right. It has helped both the deer hunters. It's helped the duck hunters. About the only thing I haven't heard good news on is the woodcock, and that may change any day. So there's a lot to talk about. We've got a couple of news items Especially and a wonderful I, deer story to I tell don't know. Them. I guess everybody's hunting and going to saltwater because the specs are just crazy. But I haven't gotten a lot of freshwater reports, I know, from people I normally do. So uh, we go, I have that in a hunting and fishing report. Don, I made a, I made a trip to Highway 71. Kessler, mm -hmm. Buckley Kessler's been sending me pictures. Uh, he'd been having the kids there all during the holidays, and he'd been sending me photo after photo after photo and telling me it's the best year he ever had. Right there at Port Barry, some of the worst they ever had. I, just certain areas, and uh, we're going to find out why his areas produce some more than the other ones. I uh, did that, and we went after your prize bird, uh, little Anthony Tipito, was there visiting with his uncle. and. That how much them kids love the camps, you know, with your mm -hmm, grand mm -hmm. nephew. Yeah. It's unbelievable to watch these kids. They get excited. And when they're chasing pulled them, you know, you ain't supposed to shoot out a vehicle, so we got a ride and we he he run he run a good 150 yards. Cameraman can't only keep up with him. And he'll shoot them pulled them and uh dog go get them. Good way to train the dog. So we got a feature on that. And you got a great interview coming up with a uh, Another big deer kill. And we got a great place we're doing a show today. Bowie Outfitters in Baton Rouge on Perkins Road, the home of a lot of good, knowledgeable people, some top line merchandise, and we're glad to be here with Paradise, Louisiana. Okay, Brett, safety and car insurance. Never scored a safety. That's defense. But go on, please. Uh, yeah, defensive. That, that's exactly how you should drive. Well, there's no such thing as a defensive drive. Offense makes the drive. Oh, I, I mean when you're on the road. But it doesn't matter, home or away. <sighs> okay, clearly I'm striking out here. Um... That's baseball. Get great auto rates from Farm Bureau Insurance. Call your agent today. moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. Trust us for local and long-distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods. Moving in storage. Solved. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. Gary, the deep freeze that we experienced last week really shuts down a lot of fishing in a lot of areas. But on the other side of the coin, it creates a fishery in many areas. If you can find deep water adjacent to shallow marshes where the wind from the north has blown that water out, dropped that water temperature down into the low 40s, sometimes even the high 30s, you can find a bonanza of fish stacked up. 
and that occurs each and every time we have one of these frozen segments of time in Shell Beach, Louisiana, in Bayou La Lutra, it's a deep canal, the Wyklosky Bridge goes right over it, and those redfish sense that's coming, they pour out of that marsh, get into that, that deeper canal, and it's no brain efficient. Looking Jig for head, a comfort zone. That's it. And I guess some food. I guess base pits also trying to they they they're going to fr fry, freeze and die. They're going to leave the grassy areas and they're going to go there too. And then plus, and they got a comfort zone and the food following them. Right, and the people show up because right. this is a great opportunity for people who do not own boats to get out and catch some saltwater fish. And they line the banks. The day we went out there, I had scheduled a trip with Mike Gallo. And of course, you know, it was like a 26 degree start in the morning and we weren't about to do that because, you know, how many fish could you catch? But we went to Shell Beach, got some market bait from Campos Marina and just set up there like everybody else. They were shoulder to shoulder along the banks catching redfish. Now, the day I went, we were catching mostly small undersized. Every now and then you'd catch a keeper, but the two days before that, the fishing pressure was so heavy, they pretty much fished them out of there. And we're going to take you down there, talk to a couple of the people, show you some of the action, and just keep this in your memory book. Whenever that temperature gets freezing like that, if you can take and deal with it, and of course you got your truck right next to you, you can just stand it on the road if you need a quick warm up, you can take advantage of one of nature's phenomenons. Here we are fishing the deep freeze in Shell Beach, Louisiana. Mine's hanging low, he's dodging the pelicans. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh -oh. get out of there, get out of that pelican. Let me tell you now, when it gets cold like this, you think the fishing gets real tough because there's no water in the marsh, the north wind blows it out. Cold temperature slows the fish down, but it can also be a bonanza if you find a spot with some deep canal water with redfish. And Cade Torres took a ride from Ponchatoula to take advantage of this situation. Cade, what do you got there? Redfish, nice size redfish. And what were y'all using to catch them with? Dead shrimp. And uh, how was the bite? Was it pretty slow? Uh, a little bit, but first cast, got a nice red fish on. You did. Doesn't get much easier than catching them off the bank, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. All righty. What, what do you think is the best technique for fishing this type of fishing? Oh, this seems to be working really good. Just a jig head on the bottom with some market shrimp. Yeah. It's a slow bite. He's really cold. Water temperatures are cold, so he's kind of lethargic. But they'll bite on it. Just be patient and let them have it. And you could come out here and warm up in the sun and catch you some redfish. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And one last important thing to remember if you're fishing out here, there is a five fish per person limit on redfish, and they got to be 16 inches minimum size. The only other thing is keep them away from the pelicans because they don't abide by any law. Hi, I'm John Jackson, and you know we always say we gather our groceries out the bayou. Whether it's freshwater, saltwater, catfish, redfish, you have tons of choices when it comes to fish in Louisiana. But when I fry fish, there's only one choice, and that's Louisiana fish fry. My new favorite, the Cajun fish fry, has the perfect amount of cornmeal, corn flour, and the perfect mix of spices that really bring the heat. Hey, if you're craving Cajun, go look for the bright red bag at your local grocers. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with Louisiana Fish Fry. For the thirsty, for those who hang out in packs, for heroes, for sidekicks, for those who see the glass half empty, for those who see it half full, for those on the right, for those on the left, for those with nicknames, for those with curves, for people that cycle, for people that recycle, for BFFs, for frenemies, for those with style, for lovers, for families, for big families, for everyone. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana, and we're talking about uh, the cold weather, how it affected fishing, but it also has affected hunting in a positive way. A lot of people have a lot of ducks showing up that have not been there before. I got some really good reports. I'm talking about some people hunting that Pearl River area saying that this is the best wood duck hunting they've ever seen in their life because we got a certain amount of resident birds, but there's also some wood ducks that migrate, and it takes that cold, hard weather north of us to bring them in. And some people, of course, for other reasons, are not going to see a lot of ducks pressure or lack of feed. But you were in a place that pretty much enjoyed some good duck uh, hunting. 
Now, Buckley Kessler, I've been knowing him for 20, 30 years. I made a lot of hunts with him. He's a big outdoorsman. He, he owns Cortex and Sugar Mill, you know, him and the family, and they work, they work constantly. But when he's off, when they quit, when they harvest and they get through with all that stuff, they're going all over the world, all over the country. And uh, he, he tried to get something close sometime. You know, he had, he's going to have leases below Morgan City, around White Lake, and <clears throat> we had leases in Gator and Klondike. He just loves to hunt. He's going to go hunt Sun Hill, Sand Hill Crane. And he loves his family and his, and his kids and his people are always, his friends are always around him. Even the years ago, we done the, the Cajun way. We did the, 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 the teal hunts, you know, with Joe and I and everybody. He had everybody there. We had, we had 50 people lying in there, all the four, four ponds, you know. But he is all inclusive. He does with his kids, but he is one of the best shots around. <laughs> He's one of the best friends you can have because he includes everybody. He bought, he, he leased some land over at Highway 71. It, it's feast of famine for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that got these leases, they're not cheap, but let me tell you what, when he gets a place, he brings it to his maximum ability. Somebody had told him about planting certain stuff. He planted it. This year, it really showed it. One of the best years he ever had. We had a good day. It was a black cloud day because of what he had been killing. All right, we got there. I had my son-in-law, Ike, to leave with us. We were supposed to take turns on camera. But let me tell you what. I got to watching little Anthony Tipito from Tipito. Just like another one of the kids, he's been having his grandkids there. I got pictures with, with, with Buckley's grandkids, and all they've been sending me for a whole week. The day before we went there was the best day he ever had. Uh, I know you're going to say our black cloud showed up. The weather changed completely. You know, it had been cold, cold weather, a lot of north wind. It was cool. The wind was cutting him, but it was coming out of a different area. Had a lot of teal. We seen a lot of big ducks. We seen a lot of geese. Let's quit talking and let me show you and what Buckley has to say why he thinks this place right now is a lot better than a lot of places around him. Buckley Kester, Anthony Tipito, and my son-in-law, Ike DeLee. Morning, buddy. How are you? Beautiful morning. About a 10 mile an hour wind off the east. It'll be good. My name is Anthony Tibbet and I go to East Tibbet Middle School.
Mike. Hey, yeah. Here you come, Mike. Yeah, Gary, this has been the best season I've ever had up, up here on Highway 71. Um, I mean, it's just been incredible. We killed a lot of a lot of big ducks this year that we hadn't done in the past. I have not hunted here yet where I hadn't killed at least one mallet, and in, in, in a lot of days I'm killing four of them. And uh, we're killing some pintail drakes too. And uh, because you can fill a truck with teal, it's, it's been unbelievable. You know, you've hunted here with me before, and uh, but you know we hunted yesterday, and uh, yeah, we six of us. Uh, you know, uh, no, we were eight of us yesterday. Everybody had their limit, and uh, <clears throat> you know I had, had a speck also the first bird I killed yesterday. But today it was I don't know what happened. The wind changed totally. Um, this is the weakest hunt we've had. We've only killed a dozen birds so far this morning, and um, but. I think what's really helped us a lot this year, we planted uh, we planted sweet sorghum and Egyptian wheat, and the birds are in here thick. They they just they, they love it. They they're, they're sitting here eating this grain, and we don't put any pressure on. We only hunt this place typically on Wednesdays and on Saturdays. Today we wanted to come out and film a little show, so we so we decided to hunt Sunday again. But the weather changed and the birds just moved, and and we should have had a few more. birds. I had a little little gun malfunction this morning too, but we should have had a few more birds. But uh, it, it's it, it beats work. It's always fun. <laughs> we just finished grinding a couple of days ago. So. Who's our co-host today? <laughs> uh, uh, the big hunter yeah, yeah. at work. This, this, is, this is Anthony Thibodeau from, from Thibodeau. Yeah, he's, he's a big hunter. How old are you, Anthony? 11. 11? Yeah, he, he's been coming out here for a long time. And now we're going to take him and let him go shoot some flying gizzards. We're going to shoot some coot. We're about to go shoot some coot and work the dog a little bit more. And you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Shoot him again. Look, turn him around. You got it. He's shooting one foot at a time. I know. Turn it in. Turn it in. Oh, I got two. Look at that one on the far side. You shoot first, and you kill them, and I shoot over them, and I count them. Yep. <laughs> well, he shot six times, or five times. You shot twice or three times? Three. I shot three times. I'm glad you didn't want to tell a lie. We shot, we shot six times, and we got four. There you go, they're landing everywhere. Come in, hold that bird up. That's good. Which one? That's your full dude. What's the real name for him? Coot. Can you spell it? Nope. Q. C. C U. No. C O O T. You ready? C O O T. Your teacher, your teacher might be watching it. C O O T. Coot. Down the view got his recipe for these. Coach Roger Kaley. His sister cook them and, and he eats them.
temper though. When you did enough shooting now, you got a gumbo. Yes, you got sir. some teal. You've been out on the farm now for what, two weeks during the holidays? You've been back and forth? Yes, sir. I guess you're ready to go back to school tomorrow. No, sir. <laughs> hey, you hear that? All y'all kids, y'all enjoyed it. Don't forget, you're building the heritage, you're building the legacy, and uh, be sure to take your kids hunting and fishing. It's worth it. Believe me, there's nothing better. Hey y'all, it's Sam Barbera. I'm with the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit that raises funds and provides support for the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Department. We assist with numerous projects like black bear, whooping crane, bald eagle, as well as family, youth, and women's workshops. For all of the information on the foundation, visit LAWFF.org. We need your support to help our wildlife and fisheries. Visit LAWFF.org. Dot org. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. Today we're at Bowie Outfitters on Perkins Road in Baton Rouge. We've got a couple of special guests with us. During the deer season, you know, you hear an awful lot of deer stories. And every deer hunt that is successful has a story to go along with it. we got a special one today. We're talking with Ms. Lindsay Anderson and also Chance Vaughn from Denham Springs. Good to have you all here with us. You too, sir. I don't know where to start with this. Uh, Lindsay, maybe you tell us uh, about your daughter and uh, why she made this very special hunt with Chance. Absolutely. So Victoria Anderson, her grandfather was a sergeant. Well, he was a sergeant in the Army, and he did a lot of great things. Um, he also, I think he was head of a prisoner of war camp. And um, in addition to that, once he left the service, he went to LSU, and he you know, made big headway in artificial, artificial insemination of cattle. Um, he actually pioneered that. So he is a great American hero in, in all regards. And part of what our organization is about is recognizing the sacrifices that families have made, families of veterans, that is, and bringing awareness to that. So this hunt was actually in honor of her great-grandfather, Dr. Howard Anderson. And in getting prepared for the hunt, did she do some research on her great-grandfather to get to learn about him? She did. She did. And that was part of the process itself. You know, we wanted her to learn about him. Um, you know, a lot of people have some military sort of roots in their family and they're not even aware of it. Right. And kids today, you know, they, they didn't grow up in a, in a big wartime era, but I think this helps bring great awareness to to that cause. In so. addition to that, she got a great hunt too. Chance. She did. <laughs> tell us about your organization. We're doing that. That's our, the main thing, of course, we're military, we are, of course, in, in a uh, the, I'm doing the guide now because I'm doing that for, for, for kids too, like their, their, their families from the military, but they were not, but they were helping their family, their, their mom and dad, their military they were, and their, their, their sons and daughters are kind of understanding more about what my mom and my dad done. Like my two sons are understanding what daddy's doing, they're getting older more understanding like that. And uh, so Victoria, she, she was, uh, she, they asked me about that, Veterans Health Foundation, I'm helping there now. And, uh, and they wanted me to do the guide, and I did for Victoria, and she did a she did a great job. How did you get involved in the organization? Why did you get involved? Well, I'm a vet also, so it was a big deal to there too. And, and the owner asked me first, and Brent and Mike Anderson, and asked me he asked me to help Veterans Health Foundation. Which could you could be a team? I said I would definitely love to do that. So I really like doing this, and I'm it's helping not just people in the vet, but the family. Well, that's great that you're doing that uh, because oftentimes we do honor and support our veterans, but we don't think about their families, and sometimes they get left by the wayside. Lindsay, what was Victoria's deer hunting experience up until this point? They, well, she, she has hunted before. I mean, she's never had anything quite like this. They had to hunt for all day, all night, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Wind, rain, it was... It was insane, yes. and um, Chance can attest to that. Yes. It was crazy weather conditions, and you know, just trying to find this one deer in particular was a big challenge. So she's never had anything like that in, in her life, and it Chance, was a significant memory for her. I'm sure. <laughs> Tell us how the hunt went. 
Well, we were hunting hard the first morning, you know. And cold. where was this? Up there at Kentwood, the hunting places. Uh, um, it's, well, Percy Abear, he actually has um, a, a hunting ranch, Abear Hunting Preserve, and he dedicated this to his children, or his daughter, I should say, um, who is in the Marine Corps, and her husband is as well. Mm -hmm. So that's where it, it took place in Kentwood. Right. And the veterans out my age asked me to be the guide, and I was like, I can definitely do that. So uh, first morning, it was cold, wet, and pretty miserable, and see a lot of deer, but not the one we're looking for. And most of all that day and that evening, of course, we hunted very hard for a couple, almost like a, a week and a half almost, we hunted that hard for the deer. No the deer's coming. We heard the deer moving, people seen them, and then uh, me and Victoria were coming in there and come to the stand, and deer seen us. We started running. Victoria looked at me and said, Chance? Said, yes. The camera's in the back. She didn't have the camera didn't work at that time, that time, and she shot it one time. And then she, the deer was running, of course. She shot it. And it kept running. She shot it a second time, and uh, and she got it. Wow! And it was awesome. Wow! That was really, really special. Not just the hunt, but the way that she took that deer. What, did, what, deer. what was Victoria's reaction Huge. after the hunt? Uh, I think she was amazed. You know, she she got to um, really experience the the challenge that comes with yes. hunting in in those kind of conditions. It was really cold, wind, rain, uh, but she was very grateful to to be able to participate in this hunt, to get to know Chance to get to learn about his experience as a veteran and you know just generally connect with her her veteran roots. Well, I'd sure like to meet her. Sounds like she's got some great shooting skills. <laughs> she's a very good hunter. She likes hunting, but she, she didn't like that the weather, of course, she did not like it, but uh, it, it was awesome. She did a great job. Well, and on a funny side note, um, you know, after several days of hunting this deer, there was actually some footage of the deer going up to lick the stand. It had been MIA for <laughs> for days, and then it goes up and licks the stand. I, I think it knew. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We know we leave. That we know we leave. That was a special hunt. For <laughs> That's sure. it. That and you awesome. got a special organization. If someone wants to help out, yes, because I know you need donors, you need sponsors for exactly. places to go, equipment for the people, exactly, uh, and people who know someone who may be the family of veterans and would like to get some help. How do they get in touch with you? Anything you need to do is talk to Veterans Help Foundation, and you can go to .org, right? VeteransHelpFoundation.org. You can go to VeteransHelpFoundation.org. You can also go to Facebook. Um, we have a donate button on there as well that will also lead you to VeteransHelpFoundation.org. Very good. Lindsay and Chance, thanks for coming, and a special congratulations to Victoria on that. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much. All right, we'll be right back with more. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. Today we're at Bowie Outfitters in Baton Rouge. Gary, we just saw a great hunt with Bucky Kessler up there on the Highway 71 area, but there's been a lot of areas that had good duck reports came in this week. Yeah, a lot of areas had good duck reports, but we had a lot of areas that had bad reports because the north wind blew all the water out. They True. had low, low tide. Delacroix was off my grandson and then went over that day early. They were going to build another little blind in our pond. They couldn't get to it. The pond was dry. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of, I heard the same thing I heard from Bruce Dyed. Now, they killed some birds down below a million. He told me to, you know, he said, Gary, uh, it ain't been like it's been, but now that we're getting this rain and that, that wind's changing, he says, they got water. This is one of the better years they're having in the million below Morgan City area. So they killed it. And that's some marsh. Jody, rest his soul, that used to hunt all the time over there and that in, in that area, by Dion and by, uh, I hope you're smiling down on them right now, Jody, because your people are killing some birds right now in that area. Mm -hmm. They had a drought there for a couple of years, but they're back. 
Uh, my doctor, I say my heart doctor, my cardiologist, they had been fighting a little low water, but he was hunting over there the Lizard Lodge. You heard of Lizard Lodge? No, I haven't. Right there in Slidell. Uh, him and Jocko and Jack and a couple of his friends, and Kenneth Savello, they had a great hunt over there in that area. And you, you asked me to, later on about Hayes. Mm -hmm. Hayes has got some of the best goose and duck calls around there at the Duck Festival they always calling. Uh, did Kevin, how you say that? Boisel? Boisel. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's Rommel graduate. Yeah, both Jumping father and my, son, both yeah, Rommel guys. That's yeah. right, that's right. So him and his son, uh, Kevin, they were over there and they did a great job and they killed a bunch, killed some speckle bellies also. Uh, they killed his first speckle belly, Chad did. Uh, like I said, but talking about the low water, there's a lot of other places. I did in fact because they had some rainwater up up in the north of the state, but I didn't get any reports, but you did. Give me the report you got from Catahoula because I had one group that were told us said it was a lot, it wasn't as good when they were there, and even mm -hmm. after the freeze and the cold weather as it used to, was last year, but you got a good report. Yeah, Blake Swallow, Full Strap and Stringers, uh, did a radio report with me from the blind, and they were enjoying a great hunt. Uh, some of them really quality species. They had a lot of mallards uh, mixed in with a few gadwalls, but they had redheads, they had canvasbacks, some widgeon, uh, just about everything that Catahoula has the best to offer. They made a really good hunt up there. So it's, you know, one day it can be off, but for the most part, it's been pretty solid up there. Yeah. The Chaffalai Spillway is another one making a comeback. I, I, this week I got two of them, the Chaffalai Spillway. One of them was out of, out of Henderson, Brandon A. Bear, Brady A. Bear, and D.T. Boudreau. Uh, they were on at one shot of their limit, so, you know, hunting out of Henderson. So, I mean, they're putting in, they're going back in the swamps. I used to do that mm -hmm. a lot uh, back, back real, real 20 so years ago. And I haven't made a Chaffalai hunt. I even handed it to them when they sent a picture. I'd be glad to sit in the east zone. I'd be glad. Uh, to come and shoot camera and do and kill a few ducks in there. They're mm -hmm. killing some mallards. They're killing a good mix of, of birds coming out of that out of that area. Uh, then I'm gonna go back to Highway and One. Bucky was sending me all this pizza. I don't want to do, but he had his granddaughter, Reese Kessler. She had a limit of wood ducks. You were talking about wood ducks. Mm -hmm. So and Buckley and them were killing a ray. They're killing gray ducks. We had some mallards flying around. The day we was there, it was mostly teal and. Uh, they covered up with coots, and you know, the pool do, and so I, I, I hope y'all and, and you enjoyed that part of it. Uh, Paige, McLean, her and her brother John, and some of their friends, and her dog Izzy, and and the Deville boy they hunt with. They had two pretty good days again in Celine, so they sent us some more pictures. And uh, Paige, not only are you pretty, you, she is a true outdoor girl. She bow hunts. She takes a video for us sometime, and, uh, but she's a hard-working girl. Sometimes she can't get off. I wish she could get off more, and I know she does too, but they sent me a picture. I am not going to show you, but they cooked those, those duck breasts that night. They were in there. They had a fire going. It was, it, was, it was pretty good. She said, I wish you were here, and I said, me too. Yeah, they were there. Now. That was Saturday night. I, I told you about uh, Trevor Johnson and his son, Tyler and Raymond Como. Uh, they had a pretty good hunt in, in that area down there. Same thing around the, the Amelia area. And in the southwest in Iowa, I got mixed reboots. My brother and them, one day they killed 12, 15, almost a limit. Next day they don't kill but seven or eight. Be mixed. They might kill a speckle belly or a snow geese to come through. Uh, you know, that's all in the Iowa area. So I think he killed 16 Sunday morning. My brother Sammy over there at Port Barry. They didn't do good, but a couple of blinds over, Boyd Causey and, uh, and a couple of his friends, uh, they killed 16. They could have killed 18. And they had a mix array. They had great ducks and a lot of teal, a lot of teal coming from that area. So uh, now let me just check this out so I don't miss anything. Uh, I, I don't see any more. That's a pretty good report. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's, I think I got them all. Well, you want to talk about some deer? Yes, sir. A lot of big deer. Kevin Peel got this monster you're looking at right here on camera. Uh, got this one at a place we hunted not too long ago at the sanctuary. Tremendous buck. Uh, we had we haven't enjoyed a really good season at my lease at Beaver Hunting Club. Uh, another couple of an eight point was taken like the one I got last week, and uh, 
my nephew, uh, my grandnephew, uh, did a great tracking effort to find uh, a little spike buck that we needed to, to cull out of there, too. I found a deer. You what? I found a deer right here. No. No, yeah, like real. A lot or a deer? Like actual deer. You no, sure? Yes, yeah, like for real. No, no, like no joke. No joke. White tailed deer. Let me see. Not, not a buck. Dude, you tracked him all the way? Yeah, no, actually, like right there. I swear. Oh, it is a little good. buck. A little buck. A little buck. A, lo a lot of bucks and deer have been coming from the St. Helena area, you know, all in that area, St. Helena Parish, and around Clinton, the Felicianas, all in those areas we're getting, I've been getting a bunch of reports in from that area of people killing. Uh, a lot of them kill them on family property. Ben and Drew tell me that Daddy Campbell sent in family property in Norwood. Ben talked to his older brother, he killed an eight point, and his brother Drew had a, had a seven points. Uh, another first deer, you know, I've been talking about my, my good friend, uh, Ken Lambert, who I fish with and hunt with down in, especially fish down in the Pontchartrain Basin, with Ken and Hal Lambert. His grandson is an amazing young man. You know, you and I both were around our kids that we jock between athletes and hunting. Now, a lot of kids have to work their schedule and take every minute they get especially in wrestling. Wrestling right in the middle of the hunting season where his grandson, Mason Paraka, in Alabama, he's so proud of him. He came in, spent some days in the holidays and caught fish. He was going back. He wants to come back and do a rabbit hunt or a woodcock hunt with us. So you get a few odd days after your wrestling tournaments come out. But he won the regional wrestling tournament with weight class the other day. And the next morning he goes out and kills his first deer. Congratulations to you. I, I had to give that little story. Uh, the Red River Wildlife Management Area. I got some thanks from my good friend, uh, Mike Clark. He always gives a fishing report. Mike, we're still waiting on some fishing reports up there in the, in the middle part of the state in Central. But Keith Stokes, and uh, they were in the Red River Wildlife Management Area. They had two boys, I mean, Bradley Stokes, and, and another one of Mike's son-in-laws, chance down. They, that, that whole three or four days they killed three eight points and a seven point on that day. Uh, Larry LeBlanc, St. John Paris, just, just came in in Area 9. He had a rut. Here he is coming in with a P-Row and another big shot of a big deer that came out of Area 9 in St. John Paris. And Ethan Abair killed his first deer. He was hunting with his pawpaw. Here we go right now. This is, I saw my deer report so far. Let me see. That's it. Not anymore on hunting. I, I, all I can tell you is the season's fast closing. The woodcock is, is closing. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward, you know, after that good goose season because when I was hunting with Buckley off a of highway, I'm seeing a lot of snow geese and a lot of specks in that area, which they haven't seen, so there are a lot of them coming down, but you got word from down there from Blake and them, there are a lot of geese in the Gaydon area. I didn't get nothing this week from uh, Kobe. Kobe Daniels, Top Gun, I, I didn't get a report from you, Kobe. I, I hope it's because you were busy and with clients, but uh, send it to me quick because they're about to end in about three weeks. Yep, not much time left on the, the, the more popular, the, the, the waterfowl and also the deer season, but you got the goose conservation all to look forward to, a whole month of rabbit hunting, and if you can find any of those elusive quail outside of the game preserve areas, you still got some time to do that. So we're wrapping up, looking forward to the uh, end of the hunting season and getting back into more fishing. In fact, we got a fishing report coming up and our news report all right here from Bowie Outfitters where you're watching Paradise, Louisiana.
Pause moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that's how... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. Trust us for local and long-distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods. Moving and storage solved. Welcome to the news segment of Paradise, Louisiana, which, Gary, for this time of the year, pretty busy news day. Pretty busy news day. The only news I got right now is that a great trick of fish closed on January 16th, and it'll be closed through February, the end of February. So uh, I know that's been going, and you can always catch your schedule for your, mm -hmm. for your hunting dates and, and, and the license and whatever you got to do. And, and go to their website. I'll tell you what, they've been doing a great job. I ain't been hearing many complaints about license, people having trouble getting their license. Have you heard any complaints lately about no, that? No, I haven't, but there's one little tricky thing that a lot of people have brought to my attention, and I noticed it too. You know, when you get your deer and turkey tags issued to you, uh, you, you have a report card where you fill out the date and the parish that you took the animal. You have to actually fill out the tag and put the tag on the animal before you remove it from the kill slot to be legal. But you also have to do a report. You have to do the report and let the wildlife and fisheries know what day you took the animal and where you took it. Well, if you look on the tag itself, it says you have seven days to report the kill. If you look in the regulations book or online on the wildlife and fisheries website, you got 72 hours. So I put it to him. I said, well, which is it? Is it 72 hours or is it seven days? What's the and answer? I was informed that it is 72 hours. They had changed the law. But unfortunately, because those tags are printed by an out-of-state printer, they either didn't have the time or the money to get new tags printed in time. So what I'm going to tell you is it would be up to the discretion of a wildlife and fisheries enforcement division. I mean, I reported a deer that I killed, and it was not within 72 hours because on my tag it said you had seven days. I was within the seven days. Now, they've mm. got a record of me reporting that outside of the 72 hours. So I guess they could come write me a ticket. Now, whether that would stand in a court of law where I've got it on the tag saying you got seven days to report this, you know, that's I doubt that's makes seriously. you so good. How do you get to these problems like that and you keep it on your radio? You know how I do that? Back? Because I am so aware of the laws and I'm so conscious that I do want to do everything legal. I research it. And when I find something that's a controversy that doesn't match up, I ask the question, which is, is it this or is it that? That's what makes you so bad, but I'm going to tell you what, <laughs> keep it up. All right, All right some other news. Other news. Wildlife and Fisheries is asking the fishing and boating public to be on the lookout for fish kills. The fish that could have possibly succumbed during last week's deep freeze, they generally don't manifest and show up. They'll stay on the bottom, but as the gases in the body start to expand, they float up to the top. So it's likely that you would not notice them until after the cold weather's gone. If you see that, they want your input on this. Here's the things to make a note of. Where you are, GPS locations would be great. Approximate how many fish you saw. And you know how to do that? Yes. How to count them? You look them. at area, yeah. You look at one little area, count them, and then figure out how many areas you got, right. and you extrapolate it. That's how they count ducks and other, other wildlife. So you can give them an estimate, a rough estimate, of how many fish it was, notate what species they were, and give them your name and your address and contact information in case they need more information on that. So they're asking for the help. Yeah. Hopefully we won't see it, but speckled trout cannot survive for more than a couple of days in 40 degree or low 40 degree temperature. Redfish can take it, but once it gets into the 30s, and I had a report of some 39 degree water temperatures, even the redfish can die at that point, or at least get <coughs> weakened and compromised to where they can't survive. So if you do see any of those, there's a... Uh, there's at a, one time they started floating up and they were still alive and people were netting them. I remember a well, few years ago and you got to say what you limit. That's the last thing right. to tell people. Well, if you come across a bonanza of floating, dying or dead fish, you're not allowed to keep as many as you can scoop up. You've yeah. got to stay within the limit and you have to have a license to possess them. Right. So you abide by your daily limit and your size limit just as you would if you had caught those fish. Let me say this. Don't be scared about it. You say, I see all these fish. Oh, I got to film a call. You call wildlife and fishers and you give them a location. They're going to send somebody out to look at it and get a, a more accurate report. So don't worry about it. Now, I know, they got, they got, you know, you're talking about notice of intent. The last wildlife mm -hmm. and fishers 
And you know feral hogs have been a problem. They're talking about poison this and right now. In Mississippi, you can't transport feral from one little farm down the street to another one. You, right. You, you trap a hog or you get a hog, you either got to kill them right there and exactly. uh, do it. So you, well, Louisiana must be working on the same thing, and they have a uh, notice of intent to transport feral hogs in Louisiana. If you got a legitimate reason, you can get a permit. Am I understanding that? That's, that's what you're doing. You go Agriculture to wildlife and, and forestry. Or if you're a, a program, you working with a program, you can get it. If not, it's going to be a healthy fine, and you can be in trouble for transporting feral hogs. That's a good law, and I hope it does pass. And speaking of laws, and at the Wildlife and Fisheries Commission meeting, this was the month where they go through all the changes on WMAs and deer season regulations. So go over it, look at it, make the effort to go on the Wildlife and Fisheries website and see, because some of them are not going to be adopted until it goes through a public scrutiny. And if you've got an opinion on it and you don't like something or you do like something, they want to hear from you, because that is one agency that really does serve its user groups. And one more thing. A good friend of most people, a legend in the outdoor world, uh, big in Pontchartrain Basin and all the stuff she does with the, with the kids' rodeos and stuff. Kay Florine right now is going through a little surgery. All her friends will be pulling for you, Kay. You, she'll be at the East Jefferson General Hospital on January 9th. Mention you in your prayers. And uh, she's a tough cookie, though. I'm going to tell you what. Good luck, Kay. All right. And uh, we'll be back with more of Paradise, Louisiana. Stay tuned for more Paradise, Louisiana. Voted best of Louisiana outdoors three years in a row. Aggressive, modern, and durable. The latest advancement in spinning has the Revo name on it, and almost a century of fishing expertise in it. No matter where your passion takes you, world-class fishing is only a Revo away. Welcome to the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report. And we, before we start talking about the fishing itself, safety first. Uh, this is the season for hypothermia. We had an unfortunate accident in the FLW bass tournament that was held in Okeechobee, Florida. We had a Slidell boater who was the boater. He had a non-boater angler with him. They had some type of an accident and uh, both of them went in the water. The Slidell man was rescued. He was brought to the hospital. He was recovering from hypothermia. And at press time, we're still not sure about the future of the other guy. But remember, if you're duck hunting, fishing this time of the year, be extremely careful. Uh, you, it's easy to get stranded out there and people want to get out of their boat and pull and drag boats and they get wet and you get in serious trouble. Make sure you bring some extra supplies with you in case somebody on the boat gets wet, an extra change of clothes, some of those space blankets, something to to do some heat, if nothing else, make a fire, and uh, make sure you take care you, of those precautions. You, you know who who taught us this years ago when we first started doing the show is is Warren Coco. Yeah, he the people the duck hunters in the man. He brings a little press of light, that little mm -hmm. little thing to light. He can light it, hold it with nothing. He said you can free your engine up, and it freezes up. You can do a lot of things. We can start fire. You can keep you warm, and. Uh, and if you're hunting, you know, bring these little bit of heaters. Mm -hmm. you, ne you never know. There's a lot of things to think about. Let me tell you what. In my family and my friends, I can go back and remember people that lost their lives on the water hunting and fishing. Sure. And the family that's left, a lot of them don't ever go back. That happens. Uh, speaking of safety, uh, of course, you know about it, but the general audience doesn't know about the accident that Tofield's uh, friend, Ginger Genet, experienced in the deer stand. 
That's another warning he issued. It was really two good things. One, uh, if you didn't hear about it, what happened was she, she had a heater in the, in the deer stand with her, and she, bring, she likes ball peanuts, and she brought a can of ball peanuts, which are immersed in water. She put it on the heater to warm them up, and she's done it all the time. Well, she saw a deer, she got distracted watching the deer, and she forgot about it. When she remembered, she went, she went to lift them off, and when she did, it exploded. And it gave her serious second-degree burns on her arms, her face. Uh, she, she, she couldn't even see. And luckily, because there's no cell phone service, walkie-talkies don't work in that place the way they hunt in Mississippi. Uh, they had two-way radios, and she was able to get a, a distress message to Tofield, who immediately went to her, found her where she was staggering along the trail, couldn't see, and got her finally into a hospital where she's recovered, and she's doing fine. Uh, but the moral of the story was twofold. One, be careful if you've got a heater in a deer stand. But number two, have a plan. He had a plan with those two-way radios because it could have well happened and nobody would have known what happened. So you've got to have communication of some form and maybe even a backup if you're going to be out there in a duck blind away from in, in a remote area or even on a deer stand or fishing. Well, thank you, Lord. Good luck, girls. She's something else. She's, She's tough. Hard oh, she ain't. She'll be back She's at tough. it. All right, fishing information. Boy, saltwater fishing was a little bit hard to get reports still from the, the tough weather we had, which kind of shut down the, the great speckled trout fishing that led up to that. But even so, a lot of people just were not going. Yeah. I, I ought to go out on this because he sent us some a video of him catching this fish. But for years, we talk about Highway 1 and fishing off the road. Uh, one of them, uh, we know is, is our good friend, Mr. Tommy Vidrine. He mm -hmm. fishes off the highway, but a lot, of, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of people right now, this time of year, are fishing off the banks at different canals. Well, Michael Miller went over there with my, my, one of the former friends, well, I say former friends, the guy used to always send reports, but I guess it's business, but he, told, he must have taught Michael how to fish it. Michael's waiting with them waders on, and the colder it is, the better it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Grand Isle, he's fishing top water. He got a seven and a half, he had two sixes, two fives, and a bunch of fours fishing a badonkadonk. A bomb of bait. He says the sister's bomb. Have you ever seen that color? I, I guess it's, it's got a lot of orange in it. I guess they're going to call it a sister's bait. I don't know which one it is. He didn't send me a picture. He sent me a picture of the fish, and uh, he's robbing and Tommy. Tommy Vidrine's still catching them off. I got a report from Chauvin. Rocky De Benedetta and his grandsons, Grant and J.C., they had a bunch of reds over there. Uh, Michael Barrett, he's the, he comes in superior all the time. He's doing, he had his favorite matrix share, uh, picture. He sent me a picture, a box shot, but I said, Mike, Mike Barrett, come on, send me, the, uh, send me a picture with people in it, bro. He said, but I, what about if I send you the bait? He, he was fishing that, that, that shrimp colored, uh, Matrix Shad, and then fishing off the bank, Highway 1, and catching a limit of trout. Calcasieu Estuary, Lauren Frederick, a seven pound trout on a corker. Soft Dime, you know, if you've seen them, uh, Steve Lancer sent me that picture of his girlfriend. Proud of that girl, and by the way, uh, she's another one. I don't know if they were waiting or in a boat, but that's a beautiful fish. Uh, they, she also said she released that fish she said she ain't gonna keep it until it's 10 pounds. So it's a seven pound fence she released right again. Dulac, good report from there. Four point landing. Uh, they were in a canoe. Call VOGT, Voigt? Voigt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And his wife, Melissa, two large drums and a whole box full of sheephead fishing off a, a canoe in that area. So, uh, you know, I've been getting so many reports, and you have too, from Delacroix, Shell Beach, and out there. They're catching bass right there by the land. Yeah, yeah on shrimp catching. and other baits, soft plastics. Now, know. let me give you a lot of shrimp. I, you know, I, I talk to, once a week, I, I talk to Miss Angie over there at Lake Catherine at uh, Island, Mar Island Marina, and uh, she was having, it was cold weather, she was losing her shrimp. So. She says she's cut down on, on getting the shrimp right now mm -hmm. because they're dying and it's getting expensive. But she don't have it. But they are catching on baits that look like a shrimp over there. They're catching bass and a few trout. But the redfish and the bass are the top things they're catching all around over there. And in the coastal canal, uh, back in the canals, 
uh, Irish Bayou. Mm -hmm. This tons of reports are coming right now. Uh, I talked to them people in Delacro. Uh, that you had to be careful that cold water pushed out, but it's congregating those fish, and there's the canals in it. They have no trouble catching a limit of bass. Well, you know, one of the reasons for that probably is because the bass are, are more tolerant of those cold water temperatures. Where the other fish are slowed down, get lethargic, and they're not feeding, the bass move in and, and get their do. share. That's my theory. That's it. Well, look, by the way, you know, we've been running Dockside TV and uh, Matrix.com. You know, Chaz is keeping everybody posted. I want to thank him again. Uh, but anytime you're fishing in that area, if you got any doubts, if you didn't get a report from us, all you got to do is go to their website and go to Dockside TV. And I've had Chad, you're keeping a great job of keeping everybody up. You're a little marketing marvel, too. So do what a great job you do. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Let me check. Let me check. Uh, I, I covered Calcasieu, Highway, them. Uh, Toledo Bend, I didn't get nothing this week. And nobody's over there been telling me that where they're catching any fish. Oh, yeah, I got one. Henderson. Mm -hmm. Henderson's still hot. Water's low. Got to be careful. A little rain might muddy it up. Don't let that muddy water scare you. People still catching fish, Sackalay, and bass in Henderson Lake. All right, don't forget, uh, send your reports, your photographs to Gary at paradiselouisiana.com. If you can, turn the cell phone for photographs and video. Sideways, horizontal. It fits our TV screen much better. You'll look much better. And we'll see you again next week with another edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance, Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative, Pods, moving and storage, Sol, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, and by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.